From what we know at this point, the earthquake is somewhat typical of, of the sort of setting that Japan is in. And Japan is in a location where the Pacific plate, the lid uh, of solid rock at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, is actually going underneath Japan. And where that happens, there's a lot of friction. And sometimes it snaps. And when that snap happens, there's a very strong earthquake. It pushes a huge volume of water. And then that volume of water propagates very rapidly out um, into the ocean basins, so it produces a tsunami. I think, you know, it's a, first of all, very large earthquake to begin with. Um, it was, you know, kind of distant from, uh, it was off in the ocean, kind of uh, far away. But we are going to, ex we're expecting to see, you know, quite a bit of damage related to most of, mainly to other hazards that evolved as a result of this earthquake, including uh, the tsunami and uh, as well as fires that have occurred inland in, in, in Japan. As a university, we have uh, a couple of different centers of, of excellence that are focused, that are part of a larger effort. Um, one of those centers is MSEER, the Multidisciplinary Center for Earthquake Engineering Research, that really focuses on engineering solutions to try to make uh, infrastructure more robust. In this case, for example, you have an earthquake that could shake a building, could weaken it a little bit. Uh, buildings are, of course, also designed in addition to being designed to resist earthquakes, they're designed to resist fires. Uh, but now you could have the case where, you know, some walls, for example, are made to contain the fire within a room. These walls could be cracked. Uh, the other center is, is the Center for Geohazard Studies, which I'm the director of. And what we try to do there is focus on understanding the natural processes that lead up to hazards so that we can try to forecast those. If there had been even just an hour of forecast uh, based on some data of what was happening on the sea floor, then uh, people probably could have been uh, evacuated from low-lying areas. In addition to the forecasting is also the, the modeling. So we have mm -hmm. got some idea about these events, how frequent they happen, and uh, how severely they can impact uh, certain communities. And uh, what we're trying to do then is uh, have communities preparing for events like that. A major direction that we're doing as a university is trying to pull all these things together. It's, uh, it's part of the UB 2020 strategic plan where we have a focus on extreme events. And we're really trying to pull together the hazard science, engineering, social sciences, medical sciences, and decision making so that we can really try to get sort of a systems integrated look at hazards and how we might reduce our vulnerability to those on a global scale.